you were talking to me before about um, how you broke into acting. It was, I lived in a small town in the prairies, just mm. 50, about 50 miles north of the North Dakota border. Mm. And uh, we had radio and we had cinema, yeah. but otherwise the rest of the world was very far away. Away and um, that the radio. Yeah, I met a radio actor in uh, when we went to the, to the capital, Regina, yeah. the capital of Saskatchewan, and he didn't look anything like the guy I imagined in yeah. my head. Yeah, um, <coughs> that was interesting, and I would say playing cops and robbers or cowboys and Indians. I always liked to play the bad guy because I would get killed. And I was really good <laughs> Dying. At, at long, you know, <laughs> deaths, and then lying really, really still and says, this, Pete, you're, you're okay, you're all right. Do you think it's like, because when I was yeah. a kid, have you ever seen Harold and Maud? It's, Harold um, and Maud, yeah, it's about yeah. the old guy and, yes. You know, the young kid and the old, yeah. yeah. And, the, and he, the, the kid there, he, all he does is stage deaths for his parents. And that always yeah. mother, and that's what I did. I used to stage deaths for my parents, probably, you know, to get attention. Yeah. But I got attention. I wasn't like an ignored child. So, but it was very much like, you know, I just, my mum would come home and I'd be lying there in a pool of blood and she'd be like, oh God, and step over. Oh, she'd <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. ignore you till you finally got time. Yeah, but it. it's interesting you say that because, you know, just that thing of I'm dead. I didn't do it with my parents. <coughs> I, did it with my, I did it with my sister. She was two years younger. Okay. Um, and she, she, she would tickle me, and right. I hate, I hated being tickled. Yeah, I don't and <laughs> and and then I just go, I'd, I'd stop being ticklish, and I'd go dead. Yeah. And, and 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 I wouldn't move at all for anything, and she'd get really, really panicky. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd come round, and I wouldn't. So, <laughs> so it's, it's more my about sort getting of, your my sort of secret. <laughs> 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 like shock, shocking people or um, you know surprising people or making them laugh mm. is uh, I think it's, it's that, you know because you can make people think or elicit emotions in people but those are the ones that they're instant yeah. you know you get a feedback you get you an get immediate feedback, feedback yes. of physical physical yes. jump or laugh mm. or and <clears throat> I think it's that. I'm definitely addicted yeah. to that. I love, you know, if they're showing, if watching a horror movie, I love turning around and looking at the audience. Yeah, I'm not good with horror films. And no. I, I, I think, I, no, I didn't tell you. When I, f I first came to London, uh, Norman Bates. Oh, Psycho. Psycho. Oh, yeah. Monday Psycho. Yeah. yeah. That really did for me. That, oh, that yeah. ruined my sleep for a very, very long time. So watching that film really, um, and I lived at the top top floor of an old house in Baker Street. Oh, Jesus Christ, I didn't want to go up those stairs. What <laughs> was going to come after me? You know? Yeah, I saw Alien when I was about nine, and I haven't really been scared since. You know, that's theory, you know, that you sometimes you have a fright or something that you yeah. haven't, you just, it doesn't, that is, Pretty much true for me. Well, I tried that on Psycho. I saw it mm. many times, <coughs> and thinking I've got to get over this, and it didn't. It, it didn't. just intensified. It's interesting. Yeah. Psycho is one of the only films that I wish I had been around to see, because mm. it's a, culturally, you know, I grew up with it on TV, and it was it was fairly normal. I hear about it being a success. To have movie. the the m main person murdered. Yeah. I know, it's incredible. I mean, you know, it's a really it shouldn't image. be, yes. Yeah. And the first shot of a toilet ever mm. in the film. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Flushing the toilet. Yes, yeah, all of that, <laughs> that, that, that detail. Yeah. What's amazing about that is Hitchcock, being such a master of the camera and everything, yeah. it's just that he, those were the buttons he wanted to push. Yeah. That, yes. You know what I mean? Like sure. He literally just wanted he, to do something that hadn't yeah. been done that was extreme. And even if it's the kid in the main character or flushing a toilet, yeah. it's still pushing it. In retrospect, the um, the time for Tony Perkins to get into drag yeah. is there's not enough time for it. Yeah. So it leaves you with the feeling that the explanation at the end isn't the real explanation, that there is a mad mother. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.
It's uh, great. And the yeah. idea of a mad mother is is uh, uh, what is horrible. Mm. Mm. There's so many good things about that movie. Yeah. It's it's sort of it's it's a, it's a weird one for me because it's sort of it's so much a part of the cultural landscape. But it, I think Hitchcock said it. It's like it it makes you jump when you're in the theatre, but it's afterwards that you get scared or that you should get scared. That's right. Yeah. And I think a lot of modern horror films don't do that. They just go for the jump. They, they're not psychological. You're not going to go away thinking, oh God, Norman Bates, but that's kind of sad. <laughs> you, you know, it's really, his character is very, it's sad. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's really, he's alone. And he's been alone for quite some time. <laughs> you yes, know what I mean? Yes, and, uh, yes you go, go loopy. Yeah. And, when I did become an actor, I got a call and s said they'd like me to do the uh, psychologist mm. who gives the explanation at the end of the movie. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I, said, I said, what? The psychologist at the end of what? Psycho. Mm. Psycho, I said. I, God, I know about psycho. <laughs> <laughs> so they got me to do Norman Bates as well. What was that for? A uh, landscape. Did Norman murder the girl at the Bates Hotel? Yes. To the time when the young man murdered his mother and her lover. Unable to face the horror of his crime, he became both mother and son. Mother! Oh my god! Mother no! Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I ever made had that, it had a, uh, the homage to that. Yeah. Where some guy goes in the door. Do you remember that? He finds the body and he's. <laughs> Interesting thing, actually, this is um, mm. uh, is the the version that was originally on television has a blank frame in between every cut of the movie in the film. Yeah. So if you go frame by frame, it was always a, a one blank frame. So you won't notice that. You won't yeah. notice yeah. it, or, or you you know. And I'm not sure if it was an aberration in the, in the transfer of the film, um, but I suspect it's some sort of you know, mind fuckery by Hitchcock. Yes. He's, he's, well, I think he's that's, putting it off a bit. He's that, sifting that is it off a bit. the difference uh, between our approach. Yeah. Because I, I don't want to know how it's done. No. Because for me, it's, no, it's, it's, a, it's a second reality. It's yeah. a second reality. Yeah. And, uh, and it's the same thing about, well, I would say, but for me, it's the same thing of learning the lines and so on. I want to get to that point where I enter into the pretend world. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not thinking about no. anything but that. And so on stage, um, I was in Belfast during the Troubles doing mm. The Iceman Cometh. And they said, Jesus, did you hear those bombs? They were really close by. No, I didn't hear them. I I've heard comedians talk about this, is that when they're sort of in charge of the audience and you can feel the, you know, the, the audience shifting and they know exactly what's happening over here because they've got so much experience. They can feel the tension sort of, you know, there's a, there's ah, a right. the laughter is it concentrated in this area of the room oh, and no, over here they no. know that they have to address this area and so they... Oh, that must be... Yeah. Yeah, I guess a lot of experience in large... Yeah. Theatres or yeah. something. The, the idea of that when it, you become lost in the room as well and the, the mm. room becomes your instrument. You know what I mean? Like you're playing it, you know. Yeah. Puppeting. I just found that, that um, you, you just find out what doesn't work. Yeah. So you stop doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so gra gradually you've got, but you haven't got a formula. No. You, you haven't. If you've got a formula, uh, it's deadly, I think. Um, well, your formula's going to get old, isn't it? Mm, yeah. As soon as you think you've found an answer to anything, mm. you know that it is. Then. Well, it's like this setup here, yeah. that, that if I had rehearsed what I would 
do, I think it would be just kind of deadly. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's sort of the point, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's the older I get, the more I want to just, you just want to play with the things that you've been given. Mm. You know? Like the, the tools that we've been given. It's, it's, you know, making films now, is, is, it, it's inherited from the old studio system. What I found is that people don't use, they still use the old studio rules as to how to make a film. Yeah. So you'll go you'll go on, onto a feature film set and they're they're not behaving like they've been given some some new toys, you know. Because you can re really and it has been done, shoot a film on an iPhone and there's some pretty good films. Yes, so Tangerine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's another oh, Steven Soderbergh recently did one. Ah, you know, yes, you know and be the man. Yeah. yeah and um, that's the way I think these things should be made now. Um, or, or at least a great deal of them. I mm. don't. I, I see that the the technology has been pushed now, pushed into a form, but I don't think it needs to be pushed anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I, I think yes. it's actually done. A film is done as a. Yeah. There are things that you can still do with film, but I think actually the the pushing of the, the technology we've got right at the moment mm. <clears throat> to try and really refine it and really. Um, really you know make it better I, I, I'm not, I don't think it's improving film would you pick a good example of some of these um no <laughs> <laughs> because I knew nothing I knew nothing about the theatre I knew very little about modern literature um, or anything like that dad spoke with still the remains of an English accent yeah um so I'd have heard that. My mother was Irish. That voice is one of the things to do with Beckett. Yeah. Because uh, reading, when I read it aloud in, in Irish, that it makes sense. immediately it, it sort of flows in a way that you wouldn't, couldn't possibly do. <laughs> you know. I always it's, think that Irish yeah. is, I don't know how to put this, but it's amazingly confrontational in the way that, and fluid in the way that it presents itself. Mm. For drama, especially for a thing to drive dialogue, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Yeah, you know, to, yeah. to have that. Uh, and it's also it's, it's um, acceptable on both sides of the Atlantic. Yeah, because it's um, infected. I mean, country and western music and yeah. Uh, Everyone really. wants to be Irish, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and president, yeah, presidents, and, <laughs> and, and I've, yeah. yes, I'm always a bit, um, af I guess, afraid of being called a plastic paddy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I first read Beckett's poetry in Galway, yeah, uh, with I guess it was my mother's, my mother's west, west of Ireland, I, I did expect someone to say, "What the hell is he? Doing? What yeah. the hell?" Is he doing? He doing here, you know. Well, he's got that fucking accent. It doesn't sound like anything you ever heard of. And 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 they bought it. And God, my confidence shot right up. I did a thing called Company. I've done it a few times. It's the most bi biographical thing that he wrote. Hmm. It's about an hour long to do as a read. It was it was a text like a short novella or something. Yeah. Um, and I was asked to do it uh, for the Happy Days Festival yeah. in Enniskillen, which mm -hmm. had been running for a few years now. And the director of it, Sean Doran, said, look, I've, we're in Beckett's school. We're going we're to have some of the things happening in the school that he went to. And in the library, um, I've got a lot of beds, dormitory beds, mm -hmm. all the way around the library, clear the library. Um, and you can read this to people lying in the bed because the first opening line is um, a voice comes to a man in the dark to a man lying on his back in the dark imagine <laughs> and um, so I had a Kindle yeah. in my hand, which was just enough illumination for a bit of my face, 
and, and, and a candle uh, on a table. Um, and I turned as I read so that all the people in the bed, and only one person went to sleep, but <laughs> I could hear him snoring. I actually knew who it was, Actually. and he stopped. It wouldn't last long. Um, uh, and then I was asked to do it again, but completely differently, um, uh, with a Welcome Trust uh, donation to a, a thing called uh, Hearing Voices, yeah. and it was about uh, it was about mental conditions with schizophrenia and things and so on. So I did it in a chapel, mm. and in fact I, I recorded it down in London. But then I went up and. I got into bed and listened, listened to it myself with the rest of the audience. And they had speakers around the bed mm. and speakers up in the corner so the voice, the voice moved. Um, and uh, yes, I realized that it, it, it must have been my mother telling me stories, uh, Grimm's fairy tales. And He, he differentiates between a pause and a silence. Right. And a pause, a pause, yes, well, that we're familiar with, but the silence is on stage when uh, the characters just sort of stop. Yeah. Everything stops. And you can feel the, the, the strange effect of that on on the audience. I, I, remember, I remember at least three times the sort of silences that you're talking about, mm. where you're, you're pretty much handing it off to the audience mm. in a way that the audience is going to feel very uncomfortable because they're like, what now? Yeah, yes. And it's almost like it's almost forgotten yeah, their lives. Forgot their, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a terrible drive. Is that lovely phrase, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And off he goes again. Yeah, yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you you know that play in and out, and I mm. don't know. To me, that play is about like pro procrastination. Yes. Um, but filling the silence. This is the, the thing. Yeah. If they don't talk, there is no there sound. Is no, yeah. It's about being in the moment, yeah. but yeah. not knowing where you came from or what's ahead. Almost. Mm. You know what else can you do if you don't know where yeah. uh, where refuge lies? Uh, yes, I love the fact when we put it into the round, yeah. that Vladimir, my character, is always looking for the, the hoped approach of, of God. He might come, not come up the road, he might come, you know. Yeah, it, it, that to me is more of a cinematic thing. You'd want the viewpoint of, mm. you would want, like, is he coming from here? Or is it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just the horizon of... Because Beckett didn't, didn't wasn't happy about it being in the round, but he, I don't think he'd, he'd had much experience of theatre in the round. You've got four, four entrances around the circle, mm. uh, and Beckett for the, the stage frontal one, the proscenium mm. out to the audience thing, still had, on the, on the set, had them walking around in circles and in diagonals, mm. and he indicates which which and where they mm. where they occur. So I had that that I was patrolling patrolling this perimeter mm. um, with Estragon sitting on his stone or wherever wherever he was while I'm looking out. And when I'm looking out, um, I'm looking out across a flat landscape because he says uh, he says. Is this the tree? Well, we saw some, and I say, do you see any others? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it's just a plain landscape. God knows, there's a, they're on a slight rise, uh, but that that's all. Looking out, um, but at the same time, got the people in the front row, and the that rows right in front of me, mm. and sometimes he just addresses them directly, and then looks right through them. Yeah, so I got another call f from from John after that that experience. Um, would I come out to Panama to work with Jeffrey Rush, who was playing the tailor? Yes, yeah, so I'd seen Jeffrey in Shine, yes, yeah. which is the film that brought him to 
attention uh, to help him with his um, with a London Jewish accent yeah. uh, and an Eng his English accent was pretty good yeah. already then when uh, Brosnan came out I worked with him on the Spanish pronunciation and things like that and his dialogue and so I was working with actors on on their dialogue we we shot I think for maybe two months in Panama and then we came back to Ireland uh, to Bray Studios and mm -hmm. shot, shot more um, and I think Pinto was working on that Beckett series that was televised so he was playing Jeffrey's uncle well look here my boy uh, well my boy you've got to do it this way not until we got back to, to Dublin did I I was on the set with uh, Pinto and I'd said to John, be nice to just tweak that. Now you've got Uncle Benny saying my boy, but there's a, a, a very common uh, Jewish Cockney phrase, which is my son, my son. Yeah. And I th it would be kind of nice, uh, nicer than my boy. And John agreed to it. And um, so there's Pinter on the set, and I said to John, I said, did you tell uh, Pinter about the, the the little line change, the, the little phrase? Uh, he said, no, no, you you tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Typical drugs. So yeah. <laughs> Stirring so the pot, yeah. Pinter getting ready, and I, I went up and I did my best. I said, uh, um, uh, hello, Mr. Pinter, I'm Peter Marinka, and I'm uh, uh, doing dialogue on, on this film. Uh, John and I had talked about a rewrite and the line uh, uh, my boy uh, was suggesting that you use instead my son. Would that be all right? Oh, I think I'll do it. The way it's written in my script, thank you very much. He, said, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't say you can't, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I felt like a cunt. <laughs> yeah. And where was John? <laughs> he wasn't anywhere. No. <laughs> And I discovered that Pinter was more nervous than any actor in the film. Right, yeah. Because uh, what I was subsequently would do, yeah. would I would go to him and say, um, uh, John would like you to do this. Mm. Because we would we do the take, and then John John would talk to me about it mm. often, say, what did you think, what did you think? And then he'd say, well, we'd go, would you mention that to the actor? And I'd to and fro. Uh, and uh, yes, I was amazed. And I think perhaps that's his, his, his bluntness and his sharpness is, is with an inner lack of confidence. Mm. Yeah.